Moving on to item number 41. Assuming outliers exist, what is the best measure of central tendency to use? Is it the median, mode, mean, or average? We have to remember this. When we speak about outliers, these are extreme scores. Meaning to say, they could be extremely high or extremely low scores. And if that happens, the mean is not the best measure of central tendency, but we have to resort to the median. Remember that, people. Letter A. Okay. 42. What is the smallest value of x squared minus 4x plus 1? Is it for any real value of x, for example, is it negative 10, negative 5, negative 3, or 1? We have to remember this. This problem could actually be approached uh, using completing the square or could be approached by finding the k of the vertex. Okay? But for now, I will approach this using completing the square. So if you have x squared minus 4x plus 1, Remember, if I have x squared minus 4x here, if you divide the wave, this is 1 already. So we could proceed with the next step of completing the square. To complete a square, to determine the constant that would complete the square, we could actually divide the coefficient of x by 2, then square it. Negative 4 divided by 2, it's negative 2. Squared will be plus 4. So I added here plus 4 to make this x squared minus 4x plus 4, or a perfect square trinomial. But also, remember, we are just dealing, we don't have an equality statement here. So for this case, to maintain the equality on this, on this one, we have to subtract 4. Because if you could see, 4 minus 4 is 0, and this will become the original one. So we did not alter the value of this, it's just that I, in, I introduced the plus 4 and the minus 4 to it. x squared minus 4x plus 4 could be factored as x minus 2 squared minus 3 because 1 minus 4 is negative 3 here. Remember as well that the value of x minus 2 quantity squared could be greater than or equal to 0. How come? Because you are actually squaring this. So the minimum value of this could be achieved when x minus 2 quantity squared is 0. So therefore, it will attain its minimum value if x should be. If you equate x minus 2 to 0, you will get x equals 2. That's why you will achieve the minimum value of the expression when x is 2. And for such, you have 2 minus 2 quantity squared minus 3. That gives you negative 3. Or it, as a shortcut, no, um, if you have uh, a particular va a certain expression in vertex form, this one, just get this one outside. That will be your uh, the value that you'll be looking for. If it's positive here, outside, if the sign here is positive, then this one is a negative value. But if the sign here is negative outside, it will be a maximum value. So for here, for this case, letter C is the correct answer. 43, find the solution to the absolute value of x minus four plus three equals five. Is it six, two, three, four, three, five, or null set? From here, you could actually see that uh, we have to isolate the expression with the absolute value symbol. For that, we will subtract both sides by 3. So you have the absolute value of x minus 4 is equal to 2. And remember, we have the property in algebra that if we use the definition, it implies that if this x minus 4 is equal to 2, or this expression inside the radical sign, the absolute value symbols, is the negative of this. 
So remember that. So solving the first one, x minus 4 equals 2, that gives you 6. For the second one, x minus 4 equals negative 2. You add 4 both sides, so you have x equals 2. Thus, letter A, 6 and 2, is the correct answer. 44. In how many ways can seven people finish in a race, assuming that there are no ties for any position? 42, 30, 60, 7, 20, or 5,040? What do you think? Remember, since uh, there are no ties for any position, in this case, no repetition is allowed. So there are just simply seven factorial ways. How come? The first place could be occupied by any seven people. If one of them is already first place, there are six people qualified for second place. Three people, uh, and then if the first and second placers are determined, there are five people left. So there are five people who, are, who could be third placers and so on until such time that the remaining person has no choice but to be the seventh placer. Hence, by the fundamental counting principle, you have to multiply them. That's why you have your seven factorial, which is the product of seven times six times of seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, 5,040, letter D. Okay. 45. Find the slope of 1, 7 and 4, negative 8. Is it negative 3, 3, 5, or negative 5? From here, we have to remember the concept of slope. That is, it's uh, to determine the value of the slope given two points. That slope is equal to y sub 2 minus y sub 1 divided by the quantity x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So with such, this let's say 1 is uh, this one, x 1, 7 are your x sub 1, y sub 1 respectively. 4, negative 8 is uh, x sub 2, y sub 2. By substitution, m is equal to negative 8 minus 7 all over 4 minus 1. So you have negative 8 minus 7, which is negative 15, all over 4 minus 1, which is 3. When simplified, that's negative 5. Letter D. Okay. 46. What is the sum of the roots of 4x squared plus 5x plus 8 equals 0? Is it negative 5 fourths, 8 fifths, 3 eighths, or 8 thirds? What do you think? In some cases, some uh, problem solvers would actually solve for the values of x for the roots and adding them. But actually, you could approach this formula using what we call Vieta's formulas. That is, if x sub 1, x sub 2 are the roots of ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, where a is not equal to 0, then the sum of the roots is negative b over a, and the product of the roots is c over a. For this particular case, 4x squared plus 5x plus 8 equals 0. Our a is 4. Our b is 5. Our c is 8 equals 0. But since we are just looking for the sum, we are just after of negative, of negative b over a, which is negative 5 over 4. So if you answered a, great job. 47. For 47, it's asking for the product of the roots. What is the product of the roots of 3x squared plus 5x minus 8 equals 0? Is it negative 5 thirds, negative 8 thirds, 3 eighths, or 8 thirds? So based on the previous slide, the product of the roots is c over a. 
And if you have 3x squared plus 5x minus 8 equals 0, so our C is negative 8. And our A is 3. So their product, x sub 1, x sub 2, is equal to negative 8 thirds letter B. All right. 48. In a right triangle, cosine x equals 3 fifths. What is tangent x? Is it 5 fourths, 4 fifths, 3 fourths, or 4 thirds? Now, from here, you could actually set up this triangle. Um, so if you have x here, The three here will serve as the ad adjacent and five here serves as your hypotenuse, right? Because of your sine, am I right? Of your cosine x, it's three fifths rather. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. That's why three here is set up this way and five here is your hypotenuse. And remember that x has to be your acute angle. We don't know the value of this uh, opposite side y in relation to x. So therefore, we could just sub, uh, solve for it using the Pythagorean theorem. So from here, you have 3 squared plus y squared equals 5 squared. So that's 9 plus y squared equals 25. Minus 9 both sides, that's y squared equals 16. And let's just get if you have the, if you take the square roots of both sides, you will have y equals plus minus four, but we're just after of the positive value of x because there's no such thing as a negative value of a side for this case. So let's set y as four. So that's four now. And since we are looking for cosine, uh, we're looking rather for tangent of x. Tangent is defined as opposite over hypotenuse, uh, over adjacent rather. So in relation to x, so x, the opposite is 4, the adjacent is 3, so tangent x is 4 thirds, letter D. I hope you got it. 49. If tangent x equals 1 fourth, which of the following could be a value of secant x? Which of these? You may pause the video if you wish. You may try to solve on your own before you solve for it. And for this one now, there are actually many ways of solving this. And for now, I will approach this because I know that there's an identity relating tangent and secant. And that is one of the, our Pythagorean identities trigonometric identities is secant squared x equals tangent squared x plus one. Tangent squared x means you square the tangent x. The same with secant squared x. Secant squared x means you square secant x. So from here, secant squared x is equal to one fourth squared plus one. The square of one fourth is one sixteenth. So and if you add 1 16th and 1, that would be 17 over 16. And I immediately took the square root of both sides. So secant x is equal to plus minus the square root of 17 over 16. 17 is not a perfect square. So it should remain inside the inside uh, under the radical sign, or it will be your radical. 16 has a square root of 4. So secant x is equal to plus minus the square root of 17 over 4. And in this case, letter A is one of the possible values. In this case, positive seven, square root of 17 over 4. 50. In how many ways can four children be selected from a group of seven? 35, 45, 630, or 840. In this case, order will not matter. So hence, this is a combination problem. 
which has the formula ncr equals n factorial all over n minus r quantity factorial r factorial. Now, since there are a total of seven children and you will be selecting only four of them, so n will be seven and your r will be your four. And that's equal to seven factorial all over seven minus four quantity factorial four factorial. And that's uh, seven times six times five times four factorial. I'll stop here because I could cancel it with a four factorial in the denominator. The seven minus four, that's your three then factorial. Three factorial is three times two times one, which is six. And I could uh, divide the six here. I could divide the four here factorials here. What will be left? It's three times five, or I mean seven times five, or 35. Hence, there are seven C4 or 35 ways to choose four out of the seven children, letter A. I hope you understood our lesson well. Okay, see you in the next video. TYVM, thank you very much and a great day to one and all.